Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, there is so much going on, we just got to get into it. So first up, FOMO and Fed Chair Powell's comments push Bitcoin price closer to all-time high. And this has been a pretty amazing 24 hours. And what he said, what Jerome Powell said yesterday is just par for the course and it's going to push us even higher. On top of Bitcoin blowing up, also the Ethereum price surges as December 1st launch date was announced for the Ethereum 2.0 and it was declared. And we're going to take a look at what's going on with that, plus a handy guide on how to become a validator with your 32 Ethereum. And finally, we'll round it all out from a question from Dr. Dave and he asks, hey, Rob, how can we buy Celsius? So we'll get into all that, but first take a look at what's going on in the market. So, uh, I mean, hey, great day. This is what I've been talking about for the last 10 months in this channel, which was in 2017, when the parabolic bull run came, people lost their minds. And I kind of feel like the same thing is happening. We've got Bitcoin at 15.4, uh, Ethereum at 4.42, that's amazing. Uh, what else is going on? Whoa, XRP up to a quarter. And then we've got Bitcoin Cash at 255, Chainlink at 11, almost 12. I mean, everything is up and everything should be up because that's pretty much how 2017 uh, kind of led up to that parabolic. And I just have to make mention of this. All the money is made when things are boring and flat or people are scared and there's a dip. This is not a big, huge time to go, you know what, I'm all in because you never know what's gonna happen tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow we could just, people could just come back and go, hey, I'm gonna take some profits. And you and you, you have Bitcoin falling to 14 or 13 or whatever else it is. Ethereum could also fall down. Everything could fall tomorrow. So again, money isn't made when everything is going through the roof. It's made when it's boring and people don't wanna invest when it's dipping. And that's really what it comes down to. And this is a quote that I put out uh, yesterday on my Twitter account. And I just said, hey, look, you're probably thinking right now, man, I wish I had bought more. But you got to just, like I said earlier, just relax. Uh, you bought what you could, when you could, and you're way ahead of a lot of other people out there. So in five years, whatever you've done before, I mean, if you're at zero, well, maybe you should start to buy something uh, and as far as cryptocurrency. That's what I'm doing. I'm not telling you what to do, but uh, you have probably bought what you could when you could. So just sit back and relax. It's going to be all right. All right. So everything's up in the market. I'm not going to go over that and beat a dead horse. Let's just jump into our main story. So first up, if I had to vote uh, an MVP for Bitcoin, it's Jerome Powell. It's Jerome Powell and Michael Saylor. They are like the all-star team for Bitcoin Incorporated. One pulls people towards Bitcoin and one person is pushing people towards Bitcoin. And Jerome's doing all the pushing. So what's going on here? So this is a quick article. It's actually a kind of long article and talks about uh, the things that Jerome Powell said. And it kind of goes over everything that we've been talking about on this channel for the last three, four months or so. And it pretty much just says, look, this is what's going on with what is pushing Bitcoin to higher highs. Well, you got Michael Saylor, MicroStrategy, you got Square, everything going on with there, you got Fidelity Digital Assets, you got Paul Tudor Jones, you got everybody kind of FOMOing in right now into Bitcoin. And speaking of that, when I looked up this article on Crypto Globe, right next to it was this one called Bloomberg TV Anchor, now bullish on Bitcoin. It's amazing how price action does that. People don't really look at the fundamentals. They just go, wow, the price is up. I'm a believer. And Sure, you can do that, but as soon as things start to turn hairy, that's when people jump ship. And that's why me and you are here right now, and we're going to always make great decisions because we know exactly where crypto is headed. We're not fair-weathered friends. We know exactly what's going to go on. So you know what? This anchor is going to come in, and a bunch of other people are going to come in like, this is awesome. I knew it the whole time. And then when it goes down south, they're like, well, maybe not. And they're gone. Great. Weak hands, get out. Anyhow, so Jerome Powell is talking about more quantitative easing. Fantastic. We'd like to hear those words. QE, quantitative easing. Me, you, and all the gold bugs love to hear that. I didn't know this, but uh, several high-profile central banks, including the Reserve Bank of Australia and the Bank of England, have announced drastic quantitative easing, or money printing, plans to combat the economic threat of COVID-19. I started talking about MicroStrategy and some other things, but this was interesting. Uh, the Fear and Greed Index total greed right now and this is the downfall of a lot of investors they start to think you know what it'll it's going to go up it's going to go up forever it's not and they're going to start dumping a bunch of money into it 
good or bad, that's what's going to happen. And it's going to push the price higher up. I don't know if it's going to be a parabolic bull run, but there are fundamentals that we must always follow. And we must not let our emotions get into the fray. That is what I learned in 2017. So when I talk about dollar cost averaging, I'm still talking about it. As the price goes up, am I going to continue to dollar cost average? Yes, but not near as much because I'm going to wait for a pullback because it is coming. And then I will increase my dollar cost average percentages. But I will always keep buying, just not as much as I do during the dips and the lulls. So moving down, so let's talk about uh, the election day, which was Super Tuesday, and the projected results from various news organizations were all totally wrong. And Lindsay Bell, the chief investment strategist at Ally Invest, told CNBC, it looks like we'll see a split Congress, which based on history has been the preference of the stock market. So what does that mean? Well, the Democrats are going to run the US House of Representatives and the Republicans are gonna retain the Senate seats. So there is going to be gridlock. And then who knows who's gonna be the president. So those guys are actually, those guys and gals are actually gonna to have to work together for once to actually get things done. But uh, if you're like me, I have no faith in Congress. I have no faith whatsoever. So I don't expect them to get anything done just like they haven't gotten anything done in the last four years. So let's get to the part of where Jerome Powell actually and what he said. And he states the current economic downturn is the most severe in our lifetimes. It will take a while to get this back to the levels of economic activity and employment that prevailed at the beginning of this year. And it may take continued support from both monetary and fiscal policy to achieve that. Good luck with that in Congress. I just would say that I think we'll have a stronger recovery if we can just get at least some more fiscal support when it's appropriate. You know, when it's appropriate in the size Congress thinks is appropriate, which depending on who you're asking, Republicans say it's around uh, 1.8 trillion and the Democrats say it's about 2.2 trillion. So basically both uh, estimates are in the T or trillions. And what does that mean? That means you have to print a lot of money. And this is the most interesting part. If you want to get the economy back as quickly as possible to where we want it to be, then really it should be all of government working together. <laughs> yeah. Is monetary policy out of power or out of ammo? And the answer to that would be no. I think we are strongly committed to using these powerful tools, quantitative easing, that we have to support the economy during this difficult time for as long as we needed, and no one should have any doubt about that. So there's two tools that the Federal Reserve has, money printing and interest rates. Right now they're gonna keep the interest rates super low or at zero, and their next option and only option they have is negative interest rates. Depending on who you ask, that could actually be a reality, which would be scary for the traditional markets. Again, for us, bring it on. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section, but that's a bunch of good reasons why Bitcoin is going to push up now and in the future. I can't tell you what tomorrow is going to bring, but I can tell you that all this turmoil and all this indecision is going to lead to higher markets. Let's move on.